Hi folks and welcome to Tech with Troy. A lot of our videos to date have focused on how to get the best deal and where to find good values for computers. We've always intended to try to get into sort of how-to videos about how to work on computers, how to upgrade them if necessary, how to set them up, and how to use software. Um, and we came across a sort of unexpected opportunity to get that started a little bit earlier than we planned. Um, in particular, uh, my son, who uh, has decided that he wants to be a YouTuber, as he refers to it, and is going to go uh, on the channel Electroplant. Um, and I were looking at uh, getting him set up so that he could make videos, with my help, of course. And um, long story short, we tried several things, and we decided that he needed a, a laptop with a little bit more processing power. In particular, he needs a discrete graphics card. And um, I'm going to do another set of videos, I think, in terms of you know, what you need for different types of uh, video production, because uh, in the course of our discussion, one of the things we realized is that uh, while he didn't really want to be uh, videoing physical objects, he does want to uh, record both games on his PC and games on our PlayStation. Um, and those actually need uh, different uh, capabilities. And I'll talk more about those in, a, in another series of videos that we'll do. But long story short, um, so I dug out uh, an older gaming laptop of mine. It's about five years old, and it was uh, a fairly good laptop. Um, and we were going to go ahead and repurpose that and make it sort of a family uh, videography laptop. Um, when I pulled it out of storage, and it had been basically in its carrying case for a couple of months. Um, I noticed it was having trouble sitting flat, and that's because if you will look here at the corner, and on this aspect of the corner, what you'll notice is that um, something calamitous has happened. Uh, in particular, what looks like has happened is the battery has swollen and popped off uh, that corner of the bottom. Now. With the slight swelling, and if this were a closer to new computer, we'd think about, well, is it possible to open the computer up, take the battery out, replace the battery, and so forth. To be honest, this is um, pretty drastic, um, and uh, it's uh, not going to be uh, possible to uh, sort of uh, fix this laptop. So, um, you know, one thing I wanted to think about then is if we're going to get another laptop, and we'll have a video about that too, then what can we recover from this laptop? And I thought it might be helpful for people to see. By the way, uh, what could have caused the swelling? Well, most likely it's, you know, it has been sitting still for a couple of months. Um, I don't think it's gotten too hot or too cold. The other thing that, that leads to this type of thing happening, though, is age. And like I said, it's about a five-year-old, maybe close to six-year-old laptop now. And so they do have a, a shelf life, if you will. And uh, I guess it was a combination of I've been working out of town. This was actually my primary sort of uh, desktop for doing work. And um, I quit using it uh, over the course of the summer when I switched jobs uh, closer to home. And between not using it as much as I used to, it had been pretty much continuously plugged in uh, for the past four years. And um, basically sitting there for two months, I think it was the, the final straw, if you will. Now, so what we're going to do today is we're going to open this up look and see what types of parts uh, have been uh, unaffected by the battery swelling. You do want to be careful if the, if the battery has actually popped or exploded and the, and the contents are out. It's a hazardous waste material. And when we're done, we're going to make sure that we um, do the right thing in terms of getting this to a recovery center that can handle not just batteries and electrical appliances, but also can deal with what is possibly a, a split battery, if you will, where the innards have come out. Um, now to do that, uh, you're going to need uh, a small screwdriver. If you look along the bottom of this, you'll see that it has Phillips head screws. Uh, well, I can see. It's probably too far for you guys to see. And this is just a set of small scale screwdrivers. Uh, sorry about the glare that um, I picked up at Harbor Freight. You can usually get them on sale for like $4.99 maybe. For a large set like this, it might be uh, closer to $7.99, something like that. But we basically just need a smaller size Phillips head screwdriver. And there are a heck of a lot of screws on the bottom. Now some of them, and it's a little bit difficult to see, but you guys can see the indentations there. Some of them are right along the periphery. and. I don't know that we'll need to take those off. 
Uh, I suspect we might, but then there's another set that's inside on sort of this felt uh, uh, trapezoidal pad you guys can see that we'll definitely have to take off. And then we'll have to take off um, screws here. Now I will uh, get started and then I will speed this up uh, when I render the video so you guys don't have to sit here and follow along. Okay, folks, I um, did wind up having to take the screws off on the spine here, and um, it's actually best to completely remove the screws if possible. You'll notice, um, even though I've speeded up the video before, that there were some screws that I did not try to take out, and that's because as I unscrewed this thing, um, there was so much pressure from within because of the battery swelling that all the screws here and all the screws sort of around this corner were basically under pressure and as soon as I fully disengaged the threads the laptop popped up a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to be very careful in terms of opening this up and seeing what state everything is in. Now I didn't even try to do anything with this corner and I probably should just because uh, looks like the housing was ripped open by the swelling but yeah there's still a might be a portion of the screw that's attached, so I'm going to unscrew that there. And normally when you're unscrewing a bottom of a laptop like this, um, depending upon whether it's intended for you to actually be working inside it, um, all the screws are usually visible, but you might find, there, that screw just sort of released, you might find that particularly on some smaller or, and or cheaper laptops that they do double purpose. What they do is they hide a couple of the screws underneath little rubber feet on the bottom. So if you do remove what, all the screws that you can see and you're still having trouble, I would look up your laptop online on YouTube, see if other people have opened it up, um, and see if they talk about having to sort of pry off any of these little rubber feet. Um, I prefer not doing that because you don't have to glue them back on when you're done and a lot of times that's actually precluded me from working on uh, cheaper laptops because I just don't want to I don't want to mess with it at that point. Now <clears throat> like I said some of these screws I can't really get out and that's because uh, when I release the pressure the top popped up here I can press down on the top the top popped up and so the screws in a sense are still uh, recessed. Um, so again, I'm just going to be very careful as I try to take this stuff off. Um, now, once you've got the screws off, and uh, here, since it's already been popped open for us, it's going to be a fairly simple process then to pry the bottom off. But what you'll find, um, a lot of times, in addition to the screws, there's internal clips, sort of like the clips that are on car panels or something like that, that um, uh, you basically have to unsnap. Now, there are, uh, I'll call them little rubber pry bars or uh, uh, cell phone tools, sometimes they're referred to, um, that you can use for doing that. The other thing that I found handy, though, is that if you take a, an old credit card, or this is a gift card for a local uh, uh, ice cream chain, if you take one of the, the firmer gift cards, what you can do, and I'm going to do this away from the corner where the uh, <laughs> battery has swollen, um, is you can, using your fingernail, sort of pry up just the, um, the corner and then slip your card in there and then just slide it down while pulling up, if you will. So slide it down the, the crack while trying to pull apart and it might be that, that you know, there you go, the snaps on that side or the clips let go. Um, but like I said, if you have trouble just sort of slide that along as pulling up and there might be several clips on a side and you'll have to pull one up, slide the card in a little bit more and so forth. Now we're going to go back around to this corner where the uh, troublesome battery is. I'm actually going to keep my fingers away from that. I'm going to try to pry up right here. This, it actually feels like it's 
sticking down there. Um, looks like from underneath. Here, let me go ahead and just pry this off. Yep, so as you can see, that battery has swollen a good deal. Now, luckily, um, since I, I make extensive use of Dropbox and other things for storing work files, I didn't lose any data um, when this thing died. Um, there are probably some game save files or something. And as you can see, so let me talk about what the different parts are. Um, so now, because this was a gaming laptop at the time, the way that they tried to make it faster is that it actually has two uh, SSD cards here. And those run on what's called a RAID array, redundant something, something, something. Basically, it, it uh, writes to both, one uh, flip-flopping between them to try to speed up reads and writes to make it as fast as possible. It also has a hard drive. Um, and then uh, the RAM, I don't remember exactly where it is here, but I suspect that once we start taking some parts off, that um, we'll be able to find it either over here or underneath um, this little metal panel. So I want to do some um, recovery here. Um, depending upon which laptop we choose to use for Electroplant's uh, videography machine, um, it would be handy to have some SSDs. And if I can repurpose the SSDs from this laptop, or at least one of them, then that will make it that much cheaper. Likewise, like I said, I think I've got some game save files on the hard drive, and I'd like to recover those. Now, if this happens to you, one of the things you want to be really careful about is even though the battery is swollen, it doesn't look like it's discharged any contents. And in particular, there's no acid or anything that appears to be on the parts that we're interested in recovering right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take those parts out and then do a little bit more delving and see exactly where the RAM is. I seem to remember this thing had 16 gig of RAM. That's probably older RAM. But it would be nice to get that out, particularly if um, the type of machine that we wind up creating for Electroplant is um, going to use older RAM. Let's see here. Now, unlike the screws on the bottom, I'm actually going to be pretty careful about the screws that I use for taking off these um, SSDs. And the reason is um, I might be able to, might need to reuse those too. Just depends on what the new laptop looks like. Now that one slipped close to the battery. Now you'll see that they really don't didn't intend for you to do this um, often. There's some tape here holding some of the components in and the screw for that SSD actually slid a little bit closer to that battery which again I'm being a little bit paranoid but I want to stay clear of. Now there is a wireless card here. Wireless cards tend to be um, pretty standard size uh, I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, it's too close to the battery for my liking. Uh, now for the hard drive, let's see. Looks like it is mounted with screws. You know what, let me take this tape off first and then we'll, we'll get a bit. Oh, it's not just tape. I think what that is, is it's like a little buffer. Uh, it's just basically padding. Let's see here. Now one thing that you could do, and one thing I probably should do, is refer to the manual for the laptop to see what the the installation or extraction instructions are. Um, to be honest, normally I can figure most of these out myself, so, um, but it does look like, you know what I think the problem is, is that this screwdriver might be too big. Looks like uh, the hard drive here is screwed in at the corner, or, you know, vertically. That's, I think that's exactly what it is. Let's see. 
and uh, huh more importantly ah uh, so what I was about to do there was actually take the hard drive apart and I realized no that doesn't make sense so having removed that little buffer actually what it looks like is if you push that way and then lift, yep, lift up and pull then the hard drive comes out so what I was looking for is a lot of times they have a little tray and they do have a tray here but the tray is actually attached to uh, the chassis itself so it's just a matter of sliding it in and then the keyboard which would sit on top of this will hold everything in place that little buffer there which has some padding in it would uh, basically keep it from jouncing around much now the question is where the heck uh, is the RAM here and like I said I suspect that it's probably underneath here underneath this this metal part so let's take a look okay folks so some time has passed and apparently there were a whole boatload of screws you have to take off um, it looks like and I wound up taking screws off the two fan assemblies had to disconnect all of the modules that sort of link into this metal plate and that metal plate is actually uh, part of the uh, backing for the motherboard I guess is the best way to describe it so now that we've done that it looks like this whole thing and I need to disconnect these cables here again if this was um, something we were trying to recover we'd have to pay a lot more attention to the steps involved um, but we're just going to be ripping cables out as we go because we don't have any intention and these um, in case you're wondering these wires here would be the antenna for the um, wireless card okay and there we go so the RAM is basically on the motherboard now to be honest I haven't opened up never really had a gaming laptop before this one um, I've not opened up a lot of the uh, gaming laptops um, but given the sort of density of stuff and the fact that they have uh, a lot more requirements for thermal cooling uh, they're more complex than normal laptops normally if you open up a laptop most laptops are designed that it make to make it fairly easy for you to replace both the RAM and uh, the storage here the storage was very straightforward um, this one to be honest uh, I must have bought this thing uh, with both of the RAM slots fully populated um, and I'm glad because I would not have wanted to have tried to take this thing apart uh, back when it was fully functional now to release the RAM um, you'll see that there's two sort of black strips they're sort of uh, rear ends are facing each other if you take up from those black strips there's little metal arms and if you pull out on the arms then the RAM chip will sort of pop up at a 45 degree angle now this RAM looks like it is probably DD3 memory so some cheaper laptops and some slightly older laptops will still use it as PC3L which means that it's um, low wattage uh, intended for laptops um, DDR3 so some cheaper and older laptops will use DDR3 so depending upon what we find when we get a replacement for our proposed YouTube videography machine we hopefully might be able to use those and each of these DIMMs are 8 gig so that's 16 gig of RAM the two SSDs are each 128 gig of RAM. Um, if we get something that has a slot for a uh, M2 SSD but doesn't have one, 
or if we get something that can take that RAM, we can certainly repurpose that. Okay, uh, now like I said, one of the things that we're going to be careful to do is package this up so that the battery won't leak into the environment. In case you're wondering, um, I'd even got to the point of pulling one of the stickers off the bottom of that uh, metal bracket that the motherboard is sort of attached to to try to find out if there were more screws. So what this little white stuff that I'm picking up is, is basically scrapings of that label because I was trying to look under it and figure out why the heck it didn't want to come up. Now, so in general, what this points out is that when you're going from one laptop to the other, things you might be able to reuse would include your storage, both uh, spinning drive, H, uh, hard drive, and uh, SSD, and then possibly memory. To be honest, if you don't upgrade your laptops very often, and as I think we'll find with these materials here, I'm not sure we're going to be able to reuse them. Um, the DDRs, uh, excuse me, the, the RAM, um, we might, but I suspect that just about any reasonably uh, somewhat new machine that we pick to be the videography machine isn't going to use DDR3 RAM, it's going to use the newer DDR4 RAM. And um, DDR4 basically runs faster and uh, in some cases uses less voltage. So it's a, it's a sort of a win-win situation to go with that. You can't really use DDR3 in uh, motherboards or laptops that are designed for DDR4. Likewise, uh, SSDs have come down in price recently. Um, now this is a nice, uh, this looks like a 2242 um, storage module. Um, so it's a, it's a nice size uh, for still being able to fit into a lot of laptops out there, but with it only being 128 gig, um, we can get like a 256 or 512 gig uh, SSD for probably 40 to 60 bucks. So I don't think we'll be reusing that much. Um, likewise, the hard drive here, I believe, yep, it's a one terabyte. And um, hard drive sizes have sort of plateaued over the past few years. That is... Um, about three years ago, they started making uh, two terabyte hard drives that would fit into laptops. Um, they haven't really gotten them up above that capacity much, but a one terabyte hard drive, um, you can get a two terabyte hard drive for 40 or 50 bucks. And so reusing this uh, in and of itself isn't going to be that important. But like I said, I've got some game saves that I might want to keep um, to make videos for one of my other channels for. So I'll definitely hook that up to an adapter and see if I can copy files off of it. Okay, I hope this has been informative, and the next video in the series will probably um, follow on after we do a boxing and first looks of the machine that we get for videography, and discuss whether any of these parts could be used in that machine to make it any better. Thanks for watching, and as always, uh, we'd appreciate any likes, and if you could subscribe to our channel, we'd appreciate that too. Take care, and welcome to 2019, uh, as I'm making this on January 1st. Bye.